I want to start this evening by giving you a frame for what I'd like to talk about. The first thing is this thing called human resources. And we're all connected, obviously, through people. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about HR so we have a common understanding of what this thing called human resources is. Then I'd like to tell you about the importance of HR to organizations, but more importantly to you. And it's well, it's as well about your career. So the three things I'd like to start off with. I want you to remember the word picnic. The second idea I'd like you to remember is 39 US dollars. And the third idea is this thing called strategy. So, when I was graduated as an undergraduate, uh, some time ago, let's put it that way, I, I was sick of school, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and uh, I worked a lot of time in the lab as an experimental psychologist. And I thought, why don't I go to graduate school, run these experiments, do shock these animals, and figure out why they behave the way they do. But I also liked people. So I had an uncle who worked in the field at the time called personnel. And I said, gee, Uncle John, what do you do with this people stuff? And I said, and he said, well, you know, I negotiate with the labor unions, I plan the retirement party, and I'm responsible for the company picnic. And I said, you know what, after four years of college, I can plan the picnic. <laughs> then I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the field of personnel. So I started on my journey, and it's been just a, just a terrific field to be in. But then several years go by, and I got associated with Rutgers. Remember I told you about the second idea, $39. So we have an executive HR program that gets people connected to get their master's degree who are working in corporations. And we take the same class, tough assignment. We start in Prague, we go to Mumbai, we go to Shanghai, and then we go to New York. I had the opportunity to teach and go to the second session in Mumbai. I get into Mumbai airport, the guy takes me, we were staying in tough, tough place, the Taj Palace. <laughs> the place, unfortunately, that got hit uh, about nine months ago. And as I, my tears rolled down my eyes as I saw the place kind of on fire, but it's been rebuilt. It's a beautiful place. So as you can tell, I'm kind of big, six, four and a half when I don't slouch. And I go into the hotel, and there's this wonderful place. And I say, you know, I'm in Mumbai. I'm going to have a suit made. So um, this is the suit. Now just over here to this gentleman, you can see it's Mumbai, India over here. <laughs> And they have my dimensions, and for 39 bucks, I get a custom-made suit. So, pretty good deal. Now, the third idea I talked to you, what I said to you about, is this thing called strategy. So, from picnic, 39 US dollars to strategy, the world has changed. And HR has changed. The $39 says we got to be more competitive. I want to do business anywhere in the world that I can do it. If I can get a suit made for 39 bucks, I'm going to get it done. I don't care where it is. But the idea of leading the global workforce is so much different now than during the days when we were planning a picnic. So it's all about strategy. I also want to submit to you that it's about your personal strategy in terms of how you're going to win. So the idea, not only of organizations, how they can win, it's also about how you can win. And I want to give you some ideas on this thing called strategy. Uh, this is uh, the former CEO of Jack Welch at GE, and he said, three years ago, a significant minority poo-pooed HR is irrelevant. They should have, because all we were doing is planning picnics. <laughs> Given the state of things, we wonder how those same HR minimalists feel now. If their company is in a crisis, or their own career, perhaps the last thing they've seen the light, HR matters enormously in good times. It defines you in bad. So it is about people. It's about being connected to your strategy. We know for a fact in our own school on the research that I've done, as well as many faculty, that people that get their strategy right win. And they win in the global marketplace. They win in a lot of different places. So, you know, I came to Rutgers, 
I'm, as an academic, now I probably shouldn't say this, but we have so many courses on strategy. We have business strategy, we have ethics strategy, we have marketing strategy, business policy strategy. Give you a quick snapshot. Strategy is three questions. What's your game to win? Where are you going to win? And the last question is how are you going to win? Now everybody today was talking about different elements of those questions. What's your game to win? How are you going to win? Where are you going to win? And how are you going to win? Uh, it defines how you should work. Now here's an idea. It's a tool. Those firms, as well as individuals, that define their strategy and then build their customers around it, build their processes around it, and their workforce, tend to do a lot better in the marketplace. I'm going to submit to you, and this is the current research do, we're doing now, those people that have their career game going, their networking, their strategy to get networked to win in a marketplace, are going to do well for themselves. Here's a strategy for Apple Computer. How many people have uh, Dell computers? How many people have the Apples? Okay, quick story. Uh, I have two daughters. One saved me a ton of money because she went to Rutgers. <laughs> She's also a graduate student here. I'm proud of my family, much like Keith. The second one was the expensive one. She's got to go out of state to school. So we go over that bridge, the Delaware Memorial Bridge, and there's the state of blue hands. And um, she's the first year in course, a proud dad that I am. I got to give her the best. We're going to get you a computer, we're going to get you a Dell, we're going to get you top of the line. Because I wasn't too sure about Apple. It's the best, you know, it has the right look for campus, the right backpack, everything's color coordinated. <laughs> she goes, and first year gets done, she did well. Comes back, she says, Dan, you know, I just want to get a new computer. So I said to her, um, well, what are you talking about? I think your computer's working fine. She said, no, 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 I want, what does she want? Why does she want the Apple? Mark, everybody else has it, everybody on the dorm floor has it, it's the thing to have. So we go to the Apple store, in the height of the recession, and where do we have to go? This is during August, where do we have to go? We have to go to the Short Hills Mall. And she also has to look at shoes. Now I can care less about shoes. So we go to the Short Hills Mall, look at Apple. Stock price today is around 232 bucks going north. What do they focus on? The affluent customer. Their game plan is to become an information management company. They got their strategy right. This is actually some of the work we've done with Apple. What do they focus on? How they do the work? Six Sigma, total quality management. Focusing on reducing error in their operations. And workforce. So we go to the Apple store. How many have been in the Apple store? It's like a circus. You go in there and you look around, right? I'm sort of the old school. I'm looking for the cash register. Instead, it's all their stuff to play with. One of the salespeople comes over and says to him, well, how can I help you? I'm expecting a real sales thing here. I'm expecting him to come out. If I give you, if you buy right now, I'll give you a 10% discount or here's a coupon. Instead, I get, gee, what are you doing? You know, what's your, what's your processor speed that you need? What kind, of, um, what kind of software are you using? And all these great technical questions. I finally said to him, I said, what's your background? He said, uh, I graduated electrical engineer. I used to work with RCA GE. And I said, I started thinking, what's this guy doing in a store? I said, by the way, true story, where'd you go to school? Because I'm kind of into schools now. He said, MIT. So I'm thinking, and, and I said, uh, well, so what are you doing now besides this summer gig selling these computers? And he said, um, well, I'm finishing up my first year of my MBA program. I said, oh, I said, where are you getting your MBA from? I didn't see many of my classes. It's not my first year MBA at Ward. So I said, well, what? 
Man. I said, let me ask you another question. How much money are you making here? So he said to me, he's getting 2,500 bucks a week, US. So I said to myself, you know, I've done some work with Apple. He said, by the way, they're paying for half my tuition. It weren't. So I'm thinking, now my daughter is still single. <laughs> so I got his card, I'm trying to save her name and get down and look at the computer. It's kind of bad. Not that I can tell. So, so I said, this is kind of cool. Now what has Apple done? They've developed their strategy. They've got an A player beyond A players. His career path is not only to run the Apple store, but a group of stores, come out of Wharton, and be a top executive in Apple. And you talk about a company that has a strategy, the people in the organization are aligned to it, and they're winning greatly in the marketplace. You can use the same approach for yourself and align yourself to what your strategy is and how you want to go forward as your, in your career. Uh, just a few other things. Know your strategy. Think of this balanced scorecard as a tool, as a way to look if you're in an organization. We know the companies that people understand what their strategy is, get it right. Look at A players and A positions. And lastly, HR is the way forward. So thank each of you and uh, have a good night.